Charlie Robertson joins us now. Now, he is global chief economist for Renaissance Capital and has done some fascinating work into literacy rates. What is necessary for a developing nation to really start to exit poverty, to really start to speed up the economy? And indeed, he's put some thought to what could have happened, for example, in Afghanistan and what now is at risk. Charlie, it's wonderful to have some time with you. And you've been looking at the data across continents, particularly looking at Africa. Tell us about what is at stake now in Afghanistan, which actually we have seen an increased literacy rate, particularly among women. What needs to be continued there if we're going to see the economy in any way grow, let alone thrive? Yeah. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, this, this did stem from work. We were looking at South Asia, what's worked in East Asia, um, and, and when countries in Africa are going to take off. And the, and the precondition, and this, this was true for Europe, you know, 150 years ago as well, um, the precondition for countries to even grow sustainably is, is about 40% adult literacy. Um, to, to actually take off, to be able to industrialize, you need about 70%. And the sad reality for Afghanistan is that it's only just crossed the 40% adult literacy threshold just three years ago. The latest data from the World Bank is for 2018, and finally got to 42%. I mean, barely enough to grow sustainably. And I think a, a, the biggest explanation for why that country is in the trouble it has been in for so many generations is because the adult literacy rate's been so low. Uh, and it's a problem for Afghanistan. It's a problem for the Sahel countries, for Somalia. We had an attack in Burkina Faso just a few days ago. Uh, again, all countries with adult literacy below 40%. Um, and, and this this holds them back. They can't grow. What have we seen to support that literacy, even though 40% seems so meagre for us, lucky enough to sit in the developed world? But what has happened to allow that? Was there any support that came from you know, the UK, the US, the, the military that was there to support that sort of education? What was it that got them to that level? Well, it, it, was, a, it was a problem recognised actually even by the Soviet-backed regime in the late 70s. Um, communist regimes tend to be quite good on literacy. Lenin always said you couldn't understand propaganda if you couldn't read and write. So they, they tried in the, in the 70s and into the, into the 80s, but they had the civil war against the Mujahideen. Um, the US has helped, it has, we've seen a big jump in youth literacy. So about two thirds of the youth now in Afghanistan can read and write in any language. This doesn't have to be in English, of course, um, and they can. So there has been progress over the last 20 years. But, and, and just on that point, it, that yeah. must be important for the youth because the youth is such a sig significant amount of the population in Afghanistan, right? Indeed. It, Afghanistan was actually on a trajectory where what you'd have is, is, is rising adult literacy. Um, at the same time, the fertility rate starts to fall. So when, when the American-backed regime uh, took over in the early 2000s, uh, the fertility rate, the number of kids per woman in Afghanistan was over seven. Now, the trouble with countries with such a high fertility rate is they have no savings. They can't grow. But as girls get educated, as, as, as women enter the workforce and, and are earning some cash, they start to decide to have fewer kids. Afghanistan's now at four and a half. That's, that's better than Nigeria. That's better than Angola. It's actually, it's heading in the right direction. And if it goes below three, that's when savings suddenly explode. And, and at that point, countries have got educated population and plenty of savings to help develop the economy. Afghanistan wasn't there yet, um, but it was finally heading in that direction, helped, I think, by some of the US uh, programs and support that we've seen in the last 20 years. But this, of course, is now, as we see Taliban take control, this is what is at risk because, in general, not a force for educating its female population. And well, what, I mean, what they did between 96 and 2002 was, was effectively condemn the country to eternal poverty. Uh, if you don't educate 50% of your population for a start, you're probably not educating all of the blokes either, um, and they weren't. Uh, and, and the result is poverty, unending poverty. So they've got a choice now. They can take Afghanistan back to that if they wish. And we will still be talking about, our children will still be talking about the mess that is Afghanistan. Or they can learn a lesson. 
and say, look what Bangladesh has done. Look what countries in the Gulf have done, Egypt, Morocco. Look what a whole host of Islamic countries have done um, in, the, in the neighborhood and have then escaped poverty. And if they, if they can take and see and learn from, from those around them, uh, then Afghanistan's got a much better future in 20 or 30 years' time. Charlie, it's nice to try and be positive and optimistic, and, and let's stick with that, therefore. Is there any other country surrounding Afghanistan right now that is looking in and seeing that within this moment it is now a drive to spend on infrastructure, to spend on education? I mean, I'd love to think that there's a lesson here for, for Pakistan as well, because Pakistan is one of the other countries that have lagged, um, and, and Pakistan has not done as well as Bangladesh. And it's not grown as fast as Bangladesh. Um, we don't buy all our shoes from Pakistan. We buy them from Bangladesh or possibly Vietnam. In Vietnam, I think, I think that whole story about comparing Saigon and Kabul, the big difference is that when the communists took over in Vietnam, they brought education with them. And, and in the 1980s already, you had 80% adult literacy. And today, Vietnam is exporting more per capita than China. So... We've seen examples in Asia, even war-torn, conflict-prone countries like Vietnam, turn it around in two generations to an incredible extent. It is possible, um, and, and that's what I'd love, love to hope, that perhaps the Taliban can bring some stability, and with that stability and security, potentially they, they now support education for all. Charlie Robertson, here's hoping, but great data to underlie some of those real viewpoints when it comes to what can catapult a country out of poverty. We thank you so much, Charlie Robertson, of course, Global Chief Economist over at Renaissance Capital. We wish you well.